Hey there, thank you so much for listening to our big Time Talker podcast. Burke Allen here. We uh, upload new episodes to all your favorite platforms every Tuesday. We're at iHeartMedia, Spotify, Apple iTunes, the Blog Talk Radio Network, wherever you get your podcast. If you like what you hear, tell a friend. If you don't like what you hear, tell a friend you like what you hear. Uh, if you hear background noise today, it's even bleeding in through the studio windows here because we are at this massive event in Chicago called the American Library Association's Annual Conference and Exhibition. There are tens of thousands of best-selling authors and publishers, uh, publicists and agents for the book industry, and not one or two librarians as well. So uh, this is the place to be if you're in the book world. We're going to talk to one of the authors now, uh, and he's written a kid's book called Zach's Quest, A Tale for Christmas. I love kids. I love Christmas. So I think I'm going to love this conversation with Matt Dragovitz. Thanks for stopping into the studio. Happy to be here. Congratulations on the book. Thank you so much. Very excited. It looks fantastic. Um, what, what took you in this direction of A, a kid's book, and B, a Christmas book? Because, Matt, you may be aware there are lots of both of those already out there. Yes, there are. And, uh, you know, I grew up in a family with nine brothers and sisters, so Christmas at our house was just absolute chaos. Was it bananas? I can't even imagine. Just just nuts. I mean, and my mom ramped it up on top of that. So our house was as early as you could start decorating. She was off to the races. So it was was just a lot of fun. And like a lot of families, you know, growing up, I grew up with all of those like uh, old Rankin Bass films. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Santa Claus is coming to town. Frosty the, the Snowman. Snowman. Sure. Yeah, yeah, all that great stuff. So, you know, growing up and having that magic instilled at you from the beginning, I really didn't have a choice. And since I loved to write and I loved comic books and creating characters, you know, I, I saw what was in the marketplace and I thought what I could do was going to be a bit different. Nine kids. We can't move past that. Nine. Right. Nine. Five boys, four girls. <laughs> So it was a quiet house. Totally quiet. I mean, uh, you, you hear my voice anywhere you go because in a house with that many people, everybody had to project. Yeah, so. you got to get up above the cacophony. Where did you grow up? Uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Well, right outside of Allentown, Whitehall, Pennsylvania. And I was the third oldest out of those nine. I know that was your existence, so it's normal to you. Right. But for those of us, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm looking at our producer, Mr. G, and Lily, who's interning today, looking at you going... Oh my God! There were nine kids in that family. Yes. That what is that like? What is that even about? You know, it's so hard to describe because it's just chaos all the time. You know, my mom was. We would have a lot of fun. I mean, she was a bit crazy, and my dad was a bit strict. So he was kind of like more of the like cat, you know, Catholic, you know, strict. Okay. Uh, but he was at work a lot, and my mom home with all those kids. You know, you'd be cleaning, and she would start a food fight sometimes, or a water bottle outside, or just stuff and then it was like after it was done I was like okay everybody clean up and move on so constant set of uh, growing up uh, recycling bicycles and clothing and stuff the oldest one's got the benefit and then it kind of worked its way down the down the ranks <laughs> how do you do I mean that's that's a major league baseball team nine kids how do you do meal times in a family like that well, my mom, it was actually almost like military. You know, she had the pots and stuff at the stove, and you just walked up with your plate, and she loaded it up, and it was, uh, fortunately, she was a good cook. So, you know, we never were wanting for food. She knew how to make volumes and make it taste good. You got other authors in the family, or are you the only one? Uh, I am the only author as of right now. So, yeah, and uh, with Zach's Quest, the great thing is, um, you know, I, in writing the book, we also had a the picture book, which is what we're talking about right now, but it was also a chapter book for the older audience since this was originally written as a screenplay. Uh, I have some friends who worked for Disney when I lived down in Orlando, right. and they were the artists on this book, and they knew the potential for this to be a feature film one day, and that was part of the reason that they signed on to work on the project because they knew it was a screenplay and that there was also a sequel in the works. Um, you know, when you write anything, you want to have something to back it up if it's successful. Sure. So with this particular story, the sequel is actually a prequel. And it's actually Santa Claus when he first arrives at the North Pole with the elves. And it's it's more like epic and grand action adventure. This is an adventure, but this one, the sequel is going to be even more on a grander scale. So it kind of it sets the story. Exactly, exactly. Well, the, the illustrations, I'm looking at the cover of the book now, are fantastic and you mentioned those old Rankin Bass things from the 60s this is right there I mean it immediately puts you in that world how did you find the illustrator 
Um, actually, I was friends with him down in Florida since I work in video production as a, that is my other professional career, um, so networking. You know, network, I knew a cameraman who was at a 3D studio. They offered to take me in and show me the place and I uh, became friends with the guy who was running the show, Jeffrey Varab, the author, uh, the illustrator for the book. And uh, we just became friends and hit it off and he introduced me to Irma, who's the colorist. Uh, she worked on like The Lion King, Mulan, Lilo and Stitch and you know, I, I'm an artist to a degree, not as celebrated as them. So right. I did draw all those concepts and all the storyboarded it and then they took it and just gave it that full kind of Disney feel and experience. So And it cool. is all that and it's a whole different world. The book by the way we're talking about is Zach's Quest, A Tale for Christmas. Matt Dragovitz is the author. And it's available bookstores everywhere and uh, online as well. And uh, I'm fascinated whenever I talk to an author who is a grown individual uh, and how they peel back that onion and get into the mindset of a child. Right. Because the, the target audience for these books is, is what age? Right. So the picture book you're going to have, you know, your typical like maybe four to eight, four to nine, depending if the parents can read it to them. Right. And then the chapter book, I would say, is probably anywhere, if you're an advanced reader, you know, seven to eight years old, upwards to 12 to 13. And so... But parents love it, too. I've had parents read it and tell me, wow, reading the pic the chapter book took me back and it kind of brought that magic back for put them. Put you in so. that world. How did you do that? How did you put yourself in the mindset of a kid? Uh, perfectly honest. Uh, I never grew up. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, my wife will attest to the fact that I'm pretty immature. <laughs> um, but again, I, in all honesty, I mean, I just, I've always loved kids. You know, when you're yep. one of nine and your third oldest, there was only another baby in the household. You know, you only ever saw kids and then you saw grandkids coming and then you started your own family. So it's like, you know, I'm the kind of guy who you'll be at a meeting and everybody will be talking with the adults and I'll be the one on the floor, you know, playing with the kids, showing them action figures and stuff like that. But so, mad at the kids table at all times. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The, the evolution of building uh, a project like this, and, and it's not just a book, as you said, there's, there's the picture book for little kids. The illustrations are amazing. There's a chapter book that is written in more long form for, for kids. Uh, you had to, to get together with this incredible Disney animation team. You're looking at it as a screenplay. That seems like a lot. So what's what's the beginning? What's the germ of the idea? Yeah, the beginning was um, you know the screenplay. I, I just got the concept in in seeing a lot of the Christmas movies that were coming out in the very commercial or your typical Hallmark movies that come out like in droves every year. I saw that there were some creative things, but nothing really felt like it had the heart of the old Rankin Bass. And that's what I really wanted to capture. And as a fun little footnote, um, when I first wrote this book, the first time I wrote the chapter book, I had reached out to the uh, official historian for Rankin Bass and asked him, I said, hey, you know, I would love to get, you know, your opinion on this. And he's like, you sure, send me the book. So I sent him a copy of it. He goes, send me two. So I sent him two. He, he, again, this is before Arthur Rankin Jr. died. He shipped him a copy of my book. What? Arthur Rankin Jr. signed it, sent it back to me, wishing me luck on the project because he loved the concept and everything. Wow. So that's one of my prized possessions that the man who, whose company made all the movies that I grew up with and emulated signed it and wished me luck on the on the project so that's a life achievement in itself yeah it's uh you know it's one of those things it's, it's got a special place in my heart and on my bookshelf <laughs> you know it's an interesting concept matt that you talk about the commercialization of christmas and i i love christmas time but certainly christmas in today's world is different than the christmas of our childhood mm -hmm, right and i wonder if, if you have thoughts on you know how we get back to that place that you try to bring folks to in your books right and I, I think one of the things that uh, Arthur Rankin Jr. did so wonderfully with a lot of the old ones that we liked was they didn't hit you over the head with a hammer reminding you of the reason for the season you know there was this fun adventure with these fantasy characters there were obviously morals to the story like in this story I focused on bravery you know self-sacrifice personal responsibility morals that you want the kids to take away from the adventure you don't just want to give all flash and sizzle with no substance right so the goal of this was to really remind kids along the way that you know Christ is the reason for the season and the messaging of Christ whether it's whether it's again I don't like to be for lack of a better term like a Bible thumper and yeah. I don't mean that to sound negative but you know you can talk about Christ and religion and the, the, the lessons 
of Christianity without having to drum it over people's heads and, and, and hit them too hard. You know, this was like just weaved into the story so that kids could understand it and care about it, but still the underlying moral messages aren't just ref uh, defined by Christianity. All people can live good morals. <laughs> well, that's right. That's right. The book, by the way, uh, A Tale for Christmas, Zach's Quest, is available now. It's beautiful. It's I'm looking at the picture book. There's also a chapter book. Um, and available in bookstores everywhere. And boy, the, the comments on the back of the book. A timeless tale of the beauty that is the spirit of Christmas. Uh, this book is the perfect gift for any child and any family who loves Christmas. Uh, I wonder when you hear those kinds of things, is there validation there? Is there, well, what goes through your mind when you get that kind of high praise? Uh, it just feels good to be simple. Um, I've always said with this book, like anyone, you would love to see commercial success. I would love to see it as a film, but if at the end of the day, the biggest success I have is knowing that there are children who are sitting down at Christmas time looking forward to hearing Zach's adventure and, and sitting along and saying, hey, mom, dad, will you read me this book again? Or once they've read the picture book as a child, being excited about getting older and reading the chapter books, um, that, that to me is its ultimate reward. Did, uh, because it does touch on uh, themes of Christianity and religion, did, did you face any obstacles in that way in, in uh, getting the book done or, or other obstacles in, in trying to get this to fruition? Uh, absolutely. Um, I did face obstacles and I'd like to give that shout out to Headline Books for taking me on with this uh, book uh, because of that. Um, there are a lot of agents right now. Um, and I don't mean this is a negative, but it's what's popular in and trending right now. There's a lot of movement towards um, either STEM or you know things related to gender or things related to race. And the thing about Christmas is it appeals to everyone. Right. Like it, it doesn't matter what <laughs> gender, ethnicity, uh, you know, Any STEM. It, yeah, it's just if if it's a good story, it's a good story, and I think it transcends all of those. But. That being said, agents, a lot of the agents and publishers were still looking for sort of niche or specific areas that were trending right now. So adding another Christmas story to the list and, and knowing that it's only good for that time of the year was probably also an issue. Well, you know, Christmas stories, though, they're sort of like annuities in the stock market, you know, the gift that keeps on giving because every year there will be new kids that will discover yes. uh, this book. All right, this is, this is where you live. You're a Chicago guy now. Yes, I am. Yes, my wife's from here, so I moved here about four years ago. So we're broadcasting live from the American Library Association event, massive event here in Chicago, McCormick Place, the big convention center. As you walk around and you see these other New York Times number one best-selling authors, are you intimidated? Are you inspired? You're in the middle of, of all of it. You're in the nerve center right. of the book world right now. Right. Um, I don't want to say intimidated. It is almost, I said, I gave an analogy to my wife that I said I almost feel like a lightning bug in a field of lightning bugs. You right. know, everybody's trying to flash and get that attention and say, look at me and hear my story. Um, but again, with my Christmas story, I do see some Christmas stories, but I don't see tons of them. So I think it is a good opportunity for people who may be interested in looking at something that has a little bit more of the traditional values and the storytelling that we grew up with. If you want to try to get that message to your children, along with the other books that you're picking up, I think that Zach's Quest is definitely worth a look. All right, you've been here four years. White Sox, Cubs. Um, I will say that Cubs because that's my family. Uh -huh. But to be honest with you, I'm a total comic book and fantasy nerd. And while I like to play sports, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want. I'm the guy who, like I said, I'll be with the kids uh, talking about elves and X Men and you know Disney and you know that's just my that's my world. So that's fantasy. <laughs> Or you and I may have to go out and get a fantastic fantasy hot dog here in Chicago. Sounds like a plan. That's Matt Dragovitz. The book is just beautiful. Zach's Quest. Now, and I say it's beautiful. I'm looking at the picture book, which is for elementary school age kids. There's also a chapter book with the same story for kids who are a little bit older, correct? Absolutely. It's a tale for Christmas. I think you're going to like this one. you got little ones, uh, kids, maybe grandkids. Pick it up. The publisher is Headline Books. And it's available in bookstores everywhere. Ask for it by name. And you can also you know, find it online. If folks want to find you online, is there a website? Yes, if you go to mattdragovitz.com, you can check it out. And uh, just a little note, we do also have free videos there from the Disney artists teaching kids how to draw the characters from the book as well as characters from the nativity. And we also have some older videos all teaching kids how to draw 
dogs, cats, aliens, and dragons. So all being instructed by the Disney artists. So valuable for kids and for actual professional artists because it's really high grade stuff. And there's also some coloring book pages to download. So lots of freebies for the site worth checking out. Very good. That's at mattdragonwoods.com. One of nine kids. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I still can't wrap my head around it. Thanks for stopping by the broadcast booth. Great to be here. Thank you so much, Bert. In Chicago for the American Library Association event in the podcast recording booth. Sponsored by our friends at the Next Generation Indie Book Awards and SpeakerMatch.com. This is the Big Time Talker podcast. Thanks for listening. Now go out and make it a great day. Bye, everybody. Awesome. Great.